Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. My name is Claire Carmichael, I'm a nurse lecturer, and today I'm gonna to be answering a question from somebody who has asked me to do this video. So the question is, can you do a video on how to do well in our higher education diploma health science access course, how to write an essay plan, and how to get information from a book and put it into your own words for an essay? Absolutely three points there, three different things. So I'm gonna do a video covering all of those points and a big thank you for requesting this if anyone's got any requests anything they want to know more about that i haven't done before put a comment below i will get to it if i can i will do it like within a week or two if i can't and i've got too much on i won't obviously um but if you have something that you think this would make a really good vlog or i want to know more about this put a comment below check my videos in case i haven't just to check that i haven't done it already before um and i will see what i can do for you so the first point, the first question was how to do well in your access course is probably the exact same advice as university. So have a look at my previous vlogs on how to get on at university, things to do in your first um, weeks and things like that, because they're kind of the same. The access course prepares you really, really well for university in the terms of workload assignments and that sort of thing. The referencing, all those sort of little bits that you need to do well in university, the access course is going to help you get set up for that. So all of my tips for university that I've given apply to the access course as well, because you're going to have assignments. So go and have a look at my assignment tips video. Um, go and have a look at these different things that I've already put out there because they're all relevant to the access course. My main tip for this is stay organised and prioritise your workload because I know the access course you can have a lot of assignments all at once and things like that so have a look and see what is due in first and just make sure that you're staying organised, managing your time well on the access course. I know I did my access course and I also worked at the same time because I wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. Um, so it's trying to balance your time as well with that. All of my tips on assignments and things like that is completely relevant to the access course. So go back and have a look at those videos because they're relevant. The second question was how to write an essay plan. Now, for me personally, I wasn't the sort of person that could sit and plan out a whole essay. That just wasn't me. I like to just get straight to the point. However, I did do some things to help me structure my assignment. Again, go back to my assignment tips video because I've got a lot of these tips already in that video, but mainly for the planning stage of your assignment, I'm gonna try and cover that now for you. But the first thing you wanna do is what is it saying on your assignment brief? Break it down because I know assignment briefs can be a bit gobbledygook in a way and you don't understand the assignment brief and you're thinking what on earth is this person asking of me especially if you haven't come from an ac academic background if you haven't been in college or school you haven't done a levels you haven't done the access course you haven't done anything for a number of years you'll be reading that thinking what is this <laughs> because you don't understand it because it's written in an academic way this is a nursing degree so it's got to be written in that sort of way um, so the first thing you want to do is break it down, break down the assignment brief, highlight the key important information that you want to add into your assignment. You need to add it all into your assignment, but just highlighting the important bits that you want to get in there will be a massive help for structuring your assignment. Also have a look at the University of Nottingham. They did an assignment brief guideline, which is really, really good. I'm going to put it in the details below. The assignment brief is really, really good and it breaks down bit by bit your assignment brief and what these words mean and what you should be doing. And if you don't understand anything in your assignment brief, like there might be certain words and things that you think, what does that even mean? Google. I know we say don't Google things, but Google the words that you want to define or the meaning behind a word or something like that. I did this for almost all of my assignments and especially more, more so for my dissertation at the end was because I didn't understand the academic words and I didn't know fully what I what they wanted from me. So I used to Google all of the words to get a better understanding of what this means. And then I could understand my assignment brief and then I could start writing. So writing your assignment, or having a plan. So you, you've got your assignment brief, you now understand what's expected of you from your assignment brief. You understand the wording now. So how do you plan to write this assignment? Uh, for me, if 
if it gives you an option, so a lot of assignments will have case studies attached to them. So read this case study and then write your assignment based on that case study. Some of them, some of them will give you topics to do. Um, so I always pick the one that I, I liked the most because it just helped me write the assignment and it wasn't such a chore. So if there was anything sexual health related, anyone that knows me knows that I've got a sexual health background. I would always pick the sexual health conversations because doing that in assignment is really interesting to me and it doesn't make it some sort of boring task it, like I, I really really enjoyed going out and finding the information and writing about it because it was something I was really interested in so write about what you love and it won't be too bad the next thing I did when I was writing my assignment was I got the assignment brief. So the little subheadings, you should have a little section that says what's expected of you from this assignment. And it should have bullet points of some sort. Every university will be different, but we always had a separate box that says, right, we want you to describe the biology of asthma, for example. Then we want you to show critical analysis of health promotion for example this is a really bad assignment uh, <laughs> that i'm giving you here um and then thirdly what is the nurse's role in that health promotion asthma whatever you're going to be talking about so there's three steps there's three bullet points there in that section to say what is it explain a bit more detail use critical analysis evidence-based practice all that jazz and then as a nurse what on earth are you going to do about it? How do you interpret it? All of the things that you've done and put it into your role as a nurse. That's usually roughly what assignments want you to do. They want you to understand the evidence. They want you to apply the evidence and what it's going to help you as a future nurse for your patients or how it's going to help you as a future nurse for your patients. So I would then take those bullet points, what you want me to write about, discuss, critical analysis, evidence base, role of the nurse, whatever it is they want you to write about, highlight it, copy and paste it onto a separate Word document. This is what I did. So you've got those as subheadings. So I know when I'm writing my assignment under each subheading that I've just created, I know I'm hitting the assignment brief points. I've got it there ready for me. I'm just going to go out and find the research and do my evidence, do my wider reading, I'm going to write about it. And then once you've finished writing your assignment, remove the subheadings because you shouldn't be having, unless they want you to put subheadings and just link them all together using linking words like furthermore, um, following this evidence, blah, blah, blah. Have a look at Manchester Phrase Bank, link below. Uh, they will give you amazing linking words and how to structure an assignment really, really well. I used Manchester Phrase Bank was my go to for everything. It was really, really good. And it's something I use throughout all of my assignments to help me just structure a lot better. And that is genuinely how I would structure my assignments, literally just copy and pasting those little headings from the assignment brief onto a separate Word document and I would start there. What is this section asking of me? I'd break it down into the sections of the bullet points. What's this asking of me? Okay, write about that. Move on to the next one. What is this asking? Making sure you cover those crucial points in the assignment brief because if you don't hit all of those criterias, you will be failing, unfortunately, your assignment. And that's basically all I would do to write my assignment. I wouldn't do any fancy planning or having a planner or anything like that. I would literally just copy and paste those bullet points and then go from there and just fill in those subheadings and then remove the subheadings at the end and make it flow nicely. And that was it. Job done. And then obviously you have to add your introduction and your, your conclusion and things like that. And just another tip, because sometimes I've seen it before where people have written their assignment but they haven't quite met the assignment brief. Does that make sense? They think that they have because they've included a legal aspect of some sort, but actually all they've done is put some brief sentence, like one line, and that's them That's them said, oh, I've met the assignment brief because I've put in a line about the legal aspects of whatever, duty of candor, I don't know, something like that. Um, but actually you haven't, you need to go into detail, you need to show your understanding of what that legal aspect is. You need to go into the legal aspects, the description of it, critically analysing it. It, it. You can't just be putting one little line and saying, well, it's in there, so I've passed. No, you have to show understanding, you have to show wider reason. It has to be a nice big discussion about the subject to pass. And then the last question was how to get the information from a book or a journal article and interpret it into your own words for an assignment. This can be tricky. 
uh, because the last thing you want to do is copy word for word and then commit plagiarism and then failing because of that. That's the last thing we want to do. Don't do that, people. Um, so something I did, again, going back to picking a topic you're really interested in or you're knowledgeable in. So sexual health. I used to work in sexual health. So I, my knowledge was there. So I knew if I've got a topic on sexual health, I knew I could write about it without looking up the evidence because I worked there for nearly six years. I've got all this knowledge. So I would write about it. And then I would go and find the references to back up what I've just said. Then I know I'm not going to be committing any plagiarism because that is literally my own words from experience. And then I'm just backing it up with evidence because the evidence is out there because sexual health is huge. And there's always, always stuff out there on sexual health. The same with obesity, asthma, for example. There's so many evidence based practices. There's so many uh, research guidelines and stuff like that. There's so many websites you can use loads of stuff out there for different conditions so if you're knowledgeable on something that would be my advice to just write and then find the evidence to back up what you're saying um that's the way i always wrote my assignments i have never had a problem thankfully fingers crossed i'm never going to have any problems but if you don't know about something but you want to write about it again i'm going to use asthma go back to asthma before i started university i didn't have a clue about asthma so something I had to do was go out and do my research. So you go out and you read about asthma. You read until it's coming out your ears and you fully understand what is asthma. And then you write about it. And then you find the evidence <laughs> to back up what you're writing about. Another thing you could do is watch, if again, if you want to talk about the uh, physiology of asthma, for example, but you don't know where to start because you don't know anything about asthma, watch some YouTube videos. This is what I did. The Khan Academy are amazing. There are other YouTubers out there that do fantastic things, but watch some YouTube videos, get a better understanding so you know what asthma is and how it affects the body and things like that, just so that you can get a better understanding of that to be able to write about it. That's something that really, really helped me as well. And then you can write about it. And again, going back, don't reference YouTube. Please never reference YouTube in your assignments. Make sure you're using high quality references. So you're going to be looking at research papers, journal articles, academic writing, academic articles, don't just use google.com or random websites because that's not showing good quality references and we need good quality references as nurses. We can't just go on google.com, unfortunately, for nursing. We have to go by evidence-based practice. What does the research say? Why are we doing what we're doing? Is there research and evidence to back up what I'm about to do to this patient? Because it's patient safety at the end of the day. This is why we go by evidence-based practice. So we have to use that in our assignments. Anyway, I'm going to get my laptop. I'm going to find a random article now and try and show you how I would write about that or interpret it into an assignment without plagiarism if I can. So here we go. I have found the official statistics for the sexually, sexually transmitted infection screening for chlamydia in England, a 2021 report. This is an official body, it's the government, it's the UK Health Secretary Agency, it was a recent study that was done in 2021, so these are the first things that I'm checking, you know, is it a legitimate company, organisation, can I use this in my assignment, is it going to look good, it's from the government, it's statistics, it's going to look good, especially when I'm talking about sexual health, I've picked sexual health just because it's the easy go-to for me. Um, so yeah, so if I'm talking about sexual health, the impact of STI rates, for example, and my role as a nurse in that, that's what I'm going to be talking about in this assignment that I've made up <laughs> in my head right now. So the main points, this says, this tells you everything you need to say. If you If you find an article, if you find a journal piece, if you're looking at research papers, have a look at that abstract because that abstract at the start is going to tell you everything you need. Is this what I'm about to speak about? Yes, I'll use it. Does this answer the question or whatever I'm talking about? No, get rid of it, move on. Don't bother, bother wasting your time reading the rest of it. That abstract is going to tell you everything. It's going to save you a lot of time. So this main points page at the very beginning is going to save me reading through this whole article. So main points, here we go. The main points, as we can see, reading all of this, STI rates has gone up in the last couple of years. It has gone up. There has been more diagnosis 
there's been more testing as well as a result there is here we go again more diagnoses of syphilis there are and then it talks about the impact of STI. So the impact, impact of STIs is still higher in young people between 15 to 24 and in certain black ethnic groups, as well as GBMSM, which stands for gay, bisexual men who have sex with men. And then it goes on to talk about the chlamydia screening program. So the chlamydia screening program was was set up for this reason because it's targeting the young people because they are all they've always been for the last however many years the greatest risk for an STI, unfortunately. So they set up the chlamydia screening program to screen everybody between those ages, regardless. Just get them screened if you can, um, just to try and prevent. That's why that was set up. So what am I going to write about? How do I turn this information into the assignment without directly quoting word for word? I would literally just look at this. So as it's talking about an increase in numbers. So I would literally just type and say the government statistics or what's this called? The UK Health Agency 2022, because it was updated in 2022. UK Health Agency 2022 shows in this recent survey or this re re recent research that the impact of sexually transmitted infections has risen you don't need to put separate infections whatever it shows they have risen you're not interpreting anything you're not uh, copying the words you're just putting this into your own words here so as you can see the main points impact of STIs has risen and then you could go on to say you know the UK health agency also state that anyone that's aged between 15 to 24 in ethnic groups GB MSN N groups are at the highest risk of sexually transmitted infection. So you're looking at statistics, statistics have gone up, you're looking at the highest group. Now we're going to speak about, okay, what are we going to do about prevention? What is your role as the nurse in that? So here we go, main prevention messages. You can interpret this bit now because it tells you here in the article what you need to do. And you're going to rewrite all of this in beautiful writing and back it up with some other evidence because there will be other research papers out there as well talking about health promotion in sexual health. So you're going to go and find some separate resources to wider your reading and get Brucey e. Brownie points for that. So yeah, so in this section, main STI prevention messages, you might want to include one from this page. And then I've just gone off and I've found another page from the government again. So this is from the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities. Again, March 2022, it's current. And we can include some of the bits on here. So something really, really good is to add is obviously your critical analysis. So health promotion, why is that going to help? because it's going to decrease those numbers, hopefully, that we've seen at the start. But what are the consequences of poor sexual health? Just to show the pros and the cons, the critical analysis, you know, both sides of the situation. So you might want to add some of this into it and show, actually, if I don't do my role as a nurse and someone receives bad consequences as a result, this is what could happen. This is what you're going to show, you know, this is going to happen as a result. But then you could also talk about around that and look for something about empowerment, empowering your patient. You know, it's not your responsibility to follow your patient around, get them to use condoms and safe sex and all of that. It's also that responsibility of your patient. It's about empowering your patient. And if they're not listening to your advice, they might go off and do this anyway, regardless of your health promotion. So it's finding other bits of evidence that says this to cover yourself as well. So looking at the good, the bad, the ugly, and the conclusion of good sexual health promotion. Another good tip that I learned was when you find an article or a research paper or something like that, look at the reference list because the reference list will give you a whole load of new evidence to look at. This is something I always, always done. I think it was someone called it the snowball effect or something like that, snowballing or something. I don't know if it's a real thing, that terminology, but um, someone told me that. Um, but yeah, but that's something that I did as well. If I was really struggling for evidence, but I found one really good paper or something like that, I would go to the reference list and you, you'll just end up finding a load of stuff from that. Um, but one of the things on this page that we've just looked at, sexual and reproductive health, applying all our health, at the bottom here, if you look... Um, promoting sexual health in, in professional practice. So this is another survey, a completely different survey. So if you click on that survey, you've got that three references that you've just found done. 
and then you can have a look at that survey and show what this survey says. What did the survey say? A survey says. But basically, when you're writing your assignment, you're going out there, you're reading something, and then it's your interpretation of what you've just read onto paper. So you're not copying word for word, you're reading it, you're understanding it, and then you're writing about it in a different way. Um, so it's you have to go into sort of details of what your understanding is of what you've just read. So not just saying this survey says that chlamydia is high in 15 to 24 year olds. You want to be talking, OK, why? Why does that matter? Always ask yourself, why does this matter? Why am I saying this? Answer your question in your assignments. Don't put the question, obviously. But you're going to be saying, you know, the highest impact of STIs is 15 to 24 year olds. This is important because of infertility, whatever you want to talk about, the impact of me as a role as a nurse, this is how it's going to impact me, this is why that these statistics matter. You just need to keep that in your mind that don't just make a statement, you need to reference that statement, you need to un put your understanding of that statement and why it's important and why you, you've just put that statement. Don't just put random statements for fun and then move on. You have to show your understanding of the impact and that will just make you top level passing your assignment as long as it's good obviously you can't just be writing any old rubbish um but that should be getting you some brucey bonus points if you're if you're really good at just describing what you've just read why it's impacting and pros cons critical analysis back it up with evidence other research papers and things like that and you'll just be well away